सच्चिदानंद विश्वत्पत्ति हेतव तापत्रय विनाशा श्रीकृष्णा वैम नुम जन्मादितरतस्वस्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवये मुह्यूर तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिम यो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीम धर्म प्रोजित केटवोत्र परमो निर्मत्सरा सता वेद्य वास्तव वस्तु शिवदम तापत्रोन्मूलनम श्रीमद्भागवते महामुनिते कि परेश्वर सद्यो हृदय बुद्यतेकृति शुश्रूषुस्तना Aryom and greetings from Niagara Falls. Karma Yoga has the purpose to quiet it, quiet in the mind. Jnana Yoga has the purpose to still, to still the intellect. and dhyana yoga has the purpose to silence to silence the ego in our course jnana is replaced by bhakti bhakti yoga is to know k n o w to know bhagwan and dhyana yoga remains the same in terms of purpose to silence the ego this is felt differently though for a bhakta it is to surrender the bhakta in dhyana yoga i silence the ego in dhyana yoga that is backed by bhakti i am surrendering the bhakta and surrendering yourself not just of the bad i'm surrendering my negative thoughts i'm surrendering my past actions but surrendering the good also i'm surrendering my sattvic intellect i'm surrendering my desire for freedom vedanta and bhagavata the trajectory is for dhyana to surrender this is most acute when one experiences the 10th skanda 
The 10th section is on Ashraya. One trusts Bhagavan, so one can surrender the bhakta, surrender oneself. In Bhagavata circles, there is a saying, Dashamasya Vishuddhyartam Navanam Iha Lakshana. Dashamasya, which means for the tenth, for the tenth skanda, Vishuddhyartam. To ensure this is very clear, Navanam Ihalakshanam are there the previous nine skandhas. They are all preparation. They are all pointing to the tenth skandha. Keeping this insight in mind, we are now going to review the entire tenth skandha. We will do this in sections of 10 chapters, essentially. We began the Dashama Skanda on September 13th, 2020. Chapters one through nine, the highlight, the heart of these chapters is Bhagavan Krishna's presence is announced. Through the Akashvani, all came to know that Bhagavan Krishna is going to be born. And shortly after, he manifests. When I use the word born, please be careful not to limit that to a birth like ours. There was a message and he manifested. Sadly, with Bhagavan Krishna, as soon as he became active, many tried to deactivate him, tried to kill him, starting with Putana. And what did he do to her? Made her Puta, <laughs> made her pure. In these chapters, Bhagavan also assumed another name, a name we love, Damodara. Damodara, the one whose udara or stomach region Devi Yashoda tried to tie with a rope. Do you remember? She was always two fingers short in tying that rope. She would make the rope longer, it would still be two fingers short. And the implication of that is that's how Dvaita is. Duality will always feel short, will always make us feel incomplete. So what should we do? Dhamma udara. <laughs> we should be disciplined with our eating. <laughs> it's not going to make you happy to be disciplined with all. Chapters 10 to 19. The highlights here is Bhagavan Krishna left Gokula to go to Vrindavana. He lived in Gokula till around the age three. That's when there was a shift to Vrindavana because it was too dangerous to live in Gokula. So many were trying to kill him. In these chapters, a highlight was Bhagavan Brahma being insecure because of Bhagavan Krishna. Bhagavan Brahma thought he was the creator, not realizing his boss, <laughs> Bhagavan Krishna, is now in creation. We also navigated Bhagavan Krishna's experiences with Kaliya, this poisonous being. Kaliya symbolizes cruelty, cruelty. And cruelty, the antidote for that is compassion. 
how one practices compassion is having a passion to help others. Compassion is a beautiful word, but people don't know how to practice this. It is to have a passion to help others. I was just sharing with our assembly in Cleveland. Holy is a day to analyze yourself. Are you holika or are you pralada? Holika is one who uses others. Pralada is one who is useful to others. Holika is cruel. Pralada is compassionate. Chapters 20 to 29. Some of the main experiences. Bhagavan Krishna is observing the season. And that was an awesome section. I've been using this a lot in different workshops and camps. We also came to know the glory of Bhagavan Krishna's flute. Our aspiration in life is to become his flute. To empty ourselves so that we feel his breath. Another beautiful portion was about the Govardhana Parvata. Bhagavan Krishna lifted this entire mountain with his left hand, little finger, and held it, I think, for a week. And the Vedanta of this, show me your go. Your go is your senses. Vardhana means to lift up. So Govardhana means to lift one's senses up. That means don't let them fall into the world. Lift them up from creation to creator. I know you all remember these specific details. This review is for my own mind. <laughs> Chapters 30 to 39. Please listen more carefully to this review. In chapter 29, so that was the brink of 30 to 39, begins the rasa pancha adhyayayihi, adhyayayihi, which means the chapters that are five in number that focus on the rasa or rasa or joy. Chapter 29, the Pranaya Gita, we explored. Chapter 30, Aradhitaha. Bhagavati Radha is indicated. Her name is not used in Bhagavatam. I shared that many times. But that specific word, Aradhitaha, the one who worships, the one who loves Bhagavan Krishna is described. And then chapter 31, the Gopi Gita. Chapter 32, Sandva, where this longing for Bhagavan Krishna is settled. There is Shanda. And 33, the Leela. And I believe a recent uh, visualization was shared with you about this Leela. Giving you more context to the importance of these five chapters. Chapter 31, the Gopi Gita, symbolizes Mumukshutva, the desire for desirelessness. Chapter 32, Moksha. Once you experience the desirelessness, that is freedom, independent joy. And chapter 33 is Bhakti. In Bhagavatam, how many Purushartas are there? One, that is bhakti. 
the previous four facilitate one. Sharing this in one more way. The tenth skanda is known as the hridaya, the heart of Bhagavatam. In this heart, these five chapters are known as the prana. What the heart depends on is blood. This is the blood of the heart. Within the pranas, we all know that there's five pranas. Chapter 31 is the udana shakti. Udana is that part of your mm, physiological system that helps you take up another body. So if we layer this with Vedanta, it is that mumukshutva, your in, intense desire for desirelessness changes your life, correct? If you don't have that intensity, your life doesn't change. But if you have that intensity, your life changes. An amazing 10 chapters that we experienced. And what's so amazing about this is it wasn't done in an emotional way. Details were shared on how to practice this. Chapters 40 to 49. In chapter 39, Bhagavan Krishna moves to Mathura. He lived in Vrindavana from around the age of four to six. Then they moved again to Nandagrama. He lived there from six to 12. And he had to move to Mathura when he was 12. Everyone's followed those footsteps. So now Bhagavan Krishna moves to Mathura. This ends the childhood of Bhagavan Krishna and begins the adulthood. In these chapters, he also defeats Kamsa. Kamsa was the first asura that was mentioned in this skanda, even before Bhagavan Krishna was born, and he defeats Kamsa. Also in this section, Bhagavan Krishna sends Uddhava to Vrindavana to be with the gopis, he sends Akrura, his uncle, to Hastinapura to be with the Pandavas. And I'm sharing that with you because Bhagavan Krishna's responsibilities grew and he had to start to delegate. So much we can relate to in terms of Bhagavan Krishna. Chapters 50 to 59. We began exploring this on September 12th, 2021. So for one year, we went from chapters 1 through 49. In our second year, we started chapter 50. What was unique about this is Bhagavan Krishna had his vivaha with Devi Rukmini. His first Devi. And his first child, Pradyumna. Also in these chapters, Bhagavan's <coughs> other vivahas are mentioned. I'm reading these names out to you. <coughs> Jambavati. That's Devi too. I know it sounds very commercial and categorical, Devi too, but how else do I explain this? Devi three, Satyabhama. Four, Kalindi. Five, Mitravinda. Six, Nagnajiti. Seven, Bhadra. And eight, Lakshmana. And that's cool because Sri Rama had his Lakshmana. Sri Krishna had his Lakshmana with a long A. 
<laughs> they both have their Lakshmanas. And this section is completed where Bhagavan Krishna defeats Mura. So what does his name become then? Another popular name of Bhagavan Krishna's? He becomes Murari. The one who feels Bhagavan Krishna is his enemy. Bhagavan Krishna does not feel Mura is his enemy. It's the other way around. The narrative is different. And then he goes on to defeat Bhauma Asura, who is popularly known as Naraka Asura, which we celebrate during Deepavali. And Bhagavan Krishna marries 16,000 more devis. Chapters 60 to 69. There's special chapters in here. In chapter 60, Bhagavan Krishna tests Devi Rukmini. He shares with her that you made a mistake. You swiped. Is it right? That means you accept? You should have swi <laughs> swiped left. <laughs> Whatever that is. You know that I don't swipe right or left, but you swiped the wrong way. <laughs> And he goes on to share that there's so many more um, princes that are richer than me, better looking than me. And she is unshaken. Nengate, no flickering. <laughs> and that was a really love-filled chapter. In this section, we also met our favorite, Paundraka. <laughs> Paundraka thought, fake it till you make it. It works in the world. It doesn't work with enlightenment. <laughs> he, he has these fake arms and this fake discus. And there was a lot of completion in, <clears throat> in these chapters. In these chapters, in 69 and 70, we came across Bhagavan Krishna's Dinacharya. I'm describing this as completion because if we just follow, and I guess I shouldn't use the word just, but it is simple. If we just follow Bhagavan Krishna's day, we will feel Bhagavan Krishna. Remind me what time he woke up. That's right. <laughs> what time do you wake up? See how easy it is? Yeah, he woke up at this time. <laughs> what time do I wake up? Two, <laughs> two hands. <laughs> <laughs> his day flowed through dhyana dhamma dana dharma in english and please note this because all of this is going to become very clear to you one week from today one week from today, the details of the contentment challenge are going to be shared. The contentment challenge is challenging yourself to live like Bhagavan Krishna. I'm telling you what this contentment challenge is going to be. At 6 a.m., dhyana or contemplation. At 12 p.m., dhamma. Or, and let me, I made a mistake there. At 12 p.m. will be, it will be, it will be Dhamma, which is conversation. It will be. I said it correctly. Thank you. 6 p.m. will be Dharma or concentration. You're with me so far. Your day begins with contemplation, then conversation, conversation with Bhagavan Krishna, then concentration. 12 a.m. Dana, which is contribution. Okay? I'll leave that there. So chapters 69 and 70 are... Bhagavan Krishna's Dinacharya. Continuing, chapters 70 to 79. 
Bhagavan Krishna continues to defeat who? Jarasandha, a very powerful personality. Then Shishupala and Dandavaktra. You remember a lot of Bhagavatam relates to Jaya and Vijaya, correct? You continue to take reincarnation. So now that's done. And in these chapters, Duryodhana's fall is highlighted. Where he thought there was water, there was land. And where he thought there was land, there was water. And what was everyone doing? Laughing. Particularly Bhagavan Krishna, that rascal. <laughs> but this is how he facilitates his Leela. And to be noted is that Raja Yudhishthira, he was the one who was most upset. He's a really dharmic person. I like him a lot. I've learned a lot about Raja Yudhishthira through Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Chapters 80 to 89. 80 to 89. A very special portion involves Sri Dhamma, commonly known as Sudama. Sri and Su, those are synonymous with each other noble. And the Vedanta part of this is, we all have a choice to make. We can either choose Bhagavan or Bhagya. Sri Dhamma chose Bhagavan. <coughs> Sri Dhamma's Patni chose Bhagya. We have a choice to make, peace or prosperity. And I have shared repeatedly, prosperity excludes peace. Peace includes prosperity. So it should be a very obvious choice. Choose Bhagavan. And this section of chapters was ended with great detail on love. There was a lot of interactions at Syamanta Panchaka, the festival at Kurukshetra. The devis shared how much they love Bhagavan Krishna. The parents shared how much they loved Bhagavan Krishna. The Vedas shared how much they loved Bhagavan Krishna. That we flowed through in a lot of detail. And this section of chapters ends with Bhagavan Narayana sharing how much he loves Bhagavan Krishna and Prince Arjuna and how much they love us. Bhagavan Narayana became Rishis Nara Narayan. Yes? But why did they become Rishis? To help us. An intense love was shared in this section. And the 10th skanda contains 90 chapters. I'm reading to you the last paragraph of the last chapter of this section. By constant and continuous practice of hearing, singing about, and remembering the glorious deeds of the Lord, man's devotion to him grows day by day, and by virtue of it, he attains to the state of the Lord, overcoming the otherwise irreversible and inevitable approach of death, which engulfs all beings. It is seeking that state that kings go to the forests, abandoning their kingdom. We got to experience this for almost two years. For one and a half years, we flowed through these 90 chapters. This last paragraph in this last line is to remind us that this dialogue is between Rishi Shuka and Raja Parikshita. What condition is Raja Parikshita in? He's been told that he's going to be killed. See, we use the word dying. We're all going to die. Not all of us are going to be killed. Yes? 
But in the terms of Raja Pariksha, he's going to be killed. There's an active reason for his death that is going to happen. So that's why Rishi Shuka is sharing, you have done the right thing by prioritizing Bhagavan and not Bhagya. Here, Bhagya I'm sharing in a lesser way and that this will work. So the message for us too is, this is working. Let this continue to work. Bhagavata idam, where we feel we belong to him. And the completion of that is, we will feel that he belongs to us. What is going to kill Raja Parikshita? What is going to cause us to die? Kala. Who is Bhagavan Krishna? Mahakala. Sharing a further transition into the 11th skanda. At the end of the Mahabharata war, when Bhagavan Krishna was feeling very sad, seeing the millions of deaths and fires around him. And who else came? Raja Dhritarashtra, Rani Gandhari. I believe this portion was shown in an episode of Upanishad Ganga. And Rani Gandhari can't handle it. She is the mother for many of the children and grandchildren who have died. And she shares with Bhagavan Krishna, the way you have caused the death of my family, I curse you for you to experience the death of your family. And that's how the first chapter of the 11th section begins. See how this curse is playing out in different ways. The Mahabharata is sharing this, Bhagavatam is sharing this. Continuing from chapter one to chapter two, I will read one shloka. This is the fourth. Bhagavan bhavato yatra swastaye sarva dehinam kripanam <coughs> yata pitroho uttama shloka vart Manam. Sri Vasudeva, that is Bhagavan Krishna's father, is speaking to Rishi Narada and says, Bhagavan Bhavato Yatra. O noble one, you are journeying. Swastaye Sarvadehinam. The noble journey to relieve the sadness of beings, the noble journey to relieve the sadness of beings. Kripanam yatha pitroho, like a father does or a parent does for a child that is helpless. That we can relate to more. When a child is helpless, a parent comes and helps. But for a noble person, they do the same, but it's not based on a relationship. It's based on a oneness. Uttama shloka vart <coughs> vartmanam. This relief is not just of those who are sad, but even those who are seeking Bhagavan. So for those who are searchers, those who are seekers. And this question or this observation from Sri Vasudeva leads into a great deal of jnana, which we will begin in full measure in our next class. I only shared this verse with all of you for us to feel the presence of Bhagavan Krishna. Bhagavan Krishna's limbs are the Shastra, are the Sadguru, 
and those are easily accessible to us. Which means Bhagavan Krishna, he's looking at us, looking after us. Sri Vasudeva has openly stated this. Feel that. To celebrate holy. We keep describing this as a festival of colors and we externalize this. Really, it should be a festival of the colorless. That is the presence of the infinite, of our original parent, not externally, but internally. Oh.